morning. Welcome to our parish of St. Joseph. Before the liturgy begins, we ask that you please turn off your cell phones and pagers. Thank you. If you are visiting us from another country, state, diocese, or parish, please stand. You are most welcome to our parish. today is offered for the intentions of Dominique Fote. Our presider for this Mass will be Father Juan Sosa. The entrance hymn is number 740, How Great Thou Art. Let us stand, turn to one another, and welcome each other to the celebration of the Mass.
constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and in the unity of our Holy Spirit, all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. The word of the Lord. and my car, you it is who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. My heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. 
for by one offering he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But on, of that day or, or of that hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. has a beginning and has an end. From ancient times, human beings have noticed this. As the day arises, the day ends. As the years go by and the seasons flow from one to the other, there is a beginning, there is an end. Even Jesus mentions it in the Gospel, referring to the victory. The difference between people of faith who know this and people who do not have faith is that for us who believe, there's not always a beginning and an end, but there's also a new beginning. There is no end. There is, for us, a new beginning. One filled with hope and one focused and centered in Jesus Christ. That's for us who have faith. And I pity and feel sorry for those who feel the end of life and the end of the world and the end of whatever has no new beginning, just the opposite. And that's what the scriptures would like to communicate to us this Sunday and next Sunday. The new beginning in Christ. Now let's take the first reading first. 200 years before Jesus, the people of Israel were suffering the oppression of another empire. The Seleucids, don't worry about the spelling, the Seleucids. The Seleucids were a branch of Greek. They came off 
Alexander the Great. And the Seleucids were oppressing all of Palestine. And they forced the Israelites to do things against the law of Moses. Many of them did it and obviously became unfaithful. But others did not and suffered death in martyrdom. Because you see, they always believed in a new beginning. But how? Well, the prophet Daniel comes out to proclaim and to predict this new beginning. And in this new beginning, which gave them strength to overcome even martyrdom, the Israelites found meaning. The Son of Man will come, the prophet would say. And he will bring us all together again. If you are wise, you will shine like the stars. And if you bring someone else to justice and to peace, to what is right, you will shine like the stars forever. That's the ending of the text. In fact, at the time of Jesus, 200 years later, you might say that Jesus is also using this code language which comes from prophetic times. It's called apologetic language. Apocalyptic language, I should say, not, not apologetic. In this type of language, things are hidden behind symbols. And so Jesus in the Gospel of Mark appears announcing, when the Son of Man comes, the sun will be darkened, and people will be waiting, and people will die, and things will change. This kind of language talks about an end, but it also talks about a new beginning. Now what about us? I propose to you that we are living the in the meantime time. Our reality is in the meantime. And so what do we do in the meantime as we await? We experience and savor the new beginning in Jesus Christ. And I feel sorry for people who do not know Jesus because they live there in the meantime, in the middle of time, very much either frustrated with life, angry about themselves, resentful for what they do or not do, and always pointing the blame on others. And I feel sorry for them. Because those of us, I try every, every day, that experience the word and sacrament of Jesus Christ, will find ways to overcome such resentment, such prejudice, such hatred, that entraps us. In Jesus we find a new beginning each day, new hope arising, even in the most difficult situations of our life, such as illness and death. That's the new beginning that begins to surface at the end of this, this liturgical year in these readings and will finally bloom during the season of Advent which begins in a couple of Sundays. My dear friends, what an opportunity, what a gift we have, that as we look at the readings, we look and experience the hope that comes from being in Jesus. But what a challenge we have to be able to live in the meantime time, close to Jesus and aware that only in Christ we can announce and preach the good news of His presence in the midst of this chaotic world that is very similar to what is described in the scriptures today. Only then can we say, we the church, announce the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confidently place before the Lord these petitions and our needs. Today's response is, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For all those who profess the gospel of the Lord and for all those who serve in liturgical ministries, we pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For the citizens of the Earth's nations and for all those who strive to work out justice and peace together. For peace in the Middle East and for the victims of natural disasters. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our prayers. For all travelers, especially those traveling for Thanksgiving, for safe travels, peace-filled gatherings, and grateful remembrance of God's blessings. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our for those gathered here today, and in particular for the members of the Pedro Pan organization, may they continue to promote the care of children and the reconciliation of families in Christ as we await for his coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our for all parishioners, family members, and friends who are sick, and for all those who have died, especially those whose names are written in the books of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the 70 years of our parish family, for all those who have gone before us in death and who served our community, and for all who will be serving in the future, we pray to the Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for your blessings. Accept us with these petitions but empower us to be a sign of your love for others through Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please join us in singing our offertory hymn, Sing to the Mountains, which is hymn number 693. 693. Thanks. 
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Damos gracias a Dios por el regalo de Jesús al comenzar esta plegaria eucarística en la cual nos encomendamos con el Señor al, al Padre. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he was freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession. Indeed, he has called us to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing this hymn of your glory. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. To this memory. The mystery of faith. <laughs>
memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Joseph, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Benedict, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the religious and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Dominic, your servant, Monsignor Brian Walsh and the deceased members of our families and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord from whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
God, we hold you to take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be.
parish announcements. Our second collection this weekend will be set aside for our parish debt. Please be generous. Join us at our annual Thanksgiving Day Liturgy on Thursday, November 22nd at 10 a.m. Experience the unity of our parish at this multicultural celebration as we give thanks to the Lord for his blessings among us. Check out the flyer in the bulletin regarding the concert in honor of the 70th anniversary of our parish and Advent retreat on December 8th. The concert, prepared by our parish choir, will be held Sunday at 7.30 p.m. in our church. All are welcome. Emmaus Women's Retreat in Spanish will take place on December 7th through 9th. Please pick up, please pick up an application from our welcome table. In an effort to continue praying for vocations at St. Joseph, we invite the Berg Wojak family to come and receive the vocation chalice for the upcoming week. Yeah, they're here. It's your family. Yes. <laughs> we encourage all parishioners to sign up to receive the vocation chalice at the front of the church. Please take a copy of our bulletin home and visit our website at www.stjosephsmiamibeach.com for all parish news and have a blessed week. Also, join us in the parish hall after mass for coffees and donuts served by the Women's Club. They are selling raffle tickets in the parish hall today for the Thanksgiving basket. I'd like to uh, once again invite a member of the Pedro Pan organization to briefly conclude uh, this mass and explain to us what it's all about. Um, I, first of all, again, all the members, let's stand up because we don't get this chance very much. Uh, you may remember that in 60, 61, and 62, uh, 30 years ago, uh, Cuban parents sent 14,000 children unaccompanied and Catholic charities throughout the United States, particularly Miami, welcomed them until their parents could be reconciled and be reunited with them. And so, we are the children 50 years later, or 51 years later. Yeah, we were children at one point. <laughs> okay, 14,000 of us came uh, during that time, and uh, today we stand as adults uh, to celebrate and to give thanks uh, to the Lord. We celebrated our annual uh, Thanksgiving uh, events, and we wanted to, to make the closure with this Mass. Um, it was a wonderful event where we celebrated together. Uh, we have uh, given away some of the holy cards, but we has, um, that was that was a holy card given to me in 1957. And it's, if you look at it, it's God pretending a plane and two children on the knees. Uh, it was before our exodus happened, but it's very significant when we find it, I find it late, many years later. So it has a lot of meaning to us. I will defer now to our historic committee chair because she's the one who knows all the history by heart. <laughs> she has researched this for a long time and she knows everything, so, Carmen? Thank you. Uh, no, I just wanted to add that uh, for the past two years we have been celebrating our personal milestones of reaching the 50th anniversary of our exodus. And uh, the reason why we have been celebrating is because uh, we think that God was awesome to us to save us from the clutches of communism, and so we needed to, uh, to celebrate and to thank him. 
And uh, just one more uh, example of how awesome he was to us. He gave us a reading today about a beginning and an end. And we started celebrating our anniversary on 1960, uh, on, uh, we, uh, Operation Pedro Pan started in 1960 and ended in 1962. So we started celebrating in 2010 and we're ending now. And with the, the, this mass is supposed to be the conclusion and he gave us the perfect reading. So that's uh, what I wanted to add, that he has been awesome to us even to this point. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Both of them are Carmen and they're not twins. And we're very honored to have with us La Madre, Maria Victoria, mother and sister, Maria Victoria. Join us in singing hymn number 757, 757. 